Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Uh, it's the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Program on 860 WNLV and 106.5 FM. WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, your destination for all things gardening. 830 garden-related videos, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and a whole lot more can be found right there. Peas are one of the first crops that you will plant in your garden or in your containers. And there's a different terminology in peas. There's, it's not just one pea fits all, okay? So there's three different types of peas, Holly. And what are, what are the three categories in which the peas fall under? Well, there's English peas, there's snap peas, and there's sugar or snow peas. Okay, so let's, let's, let's break down, first of all, the time to plant peas is obviously not on a cold morning at 10 degrees like it is today. Um, what you want to look for is soil temperature of a minimum 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's not just topsoil. That's, you know, about two or three inches down because you want to get where that root zone is going to be. So you want to take a thermometer, a meat thermometer works really well. A digital meat thermometer works really well. Clean it off when you're done. Put it back in your wife's drawer, and she won't know that you've used it. But it works extremely well. You always miss the step of cleaning it off. Well, I miss the cleaning. But it, what the deal is, it gives you an instant reading. Instant reading. And you want to look at this because it may the soil may be 42 degrees at a time that you're looking at it, but that long range forecast, you may get, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had 70 degrees here and you plant the peas and they're going to be dead today. So you want to keep that in mind. But moisture, uh, soil moist, moistness is important too, just like any crop, you need to put the water to it, but adequately and, and you know, conservatively to where the soil is moist but not soggy wet. And the key nutrients that these peas like is phosphorus. Now that is the second number on your fertilizer bag. You'll see three numbers. It's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Uh, peas produce their own nitrogen, so we don't have to worry about that. You want a low nitrogen number, and you want a higher center number to feed your peas. Now, if you have a soil test uh, from the local university extension office, you can kind of determine what you got going on there and whether or not you need to add potassium or phosphorus or nitrogen or whatever. So would it, be wa would it be wise for us to soak our peas before we plant them? You can soak your peas in just plain water uh, about 24 hours, 12 to 24 hours before you plant them. That's going to accelerate the germination of those peas by about two to three days. You don't, people will say tran you, can, you can start them indoors, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube about starting your seeds indoors in peat pellets or peat pots. It's just so much easier to just plant them in the ground when the time is right instead of fighting them and, and all of this stuff. We, we, make, we want gardening to be simple for you and, and less of a headache. And, and the fewer number of steps you have to make, the better off you are. So if you're transplanting your peas from indoors to outdoors, that's another step that you don't have to endure. Just plant them in the ground at the appropriate time. So the, 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 let's talk about English peas first. So English peas are the shelling peas. They have the thicker shells. They're usually a little bit larger, and you don't eat the pods. So if you're going to can or freeze peas, then you would use these, the shelling peas, for your, your regular peas. Well, you're not supposed to eat the pods. You can chew on them. I guess you're right. edible. I mean, we, we do chew on them, and then you kind of just get yeah, the They're the so stringy, out. but you get that juice like out. Like when people chew on sunflower seeds. Right, right. Yeah. But with, if you're going to be a juice, if you juice with a, what do you call that slow type of juicer, um, there's a, a, a juicer and then there's a slow extract juicer. Yeah, it's like an extractor. Yeah, that would work very good for this. Then there's snap peas. Okay, so these are mature peas with edible pods, and they make the snap noise. Now, you might see when you go shopping for peas or look online, you might see something that will say like sugar snap or winter snap or sugar, sugar, super sugar snap. If it says snap in the name, then those are snap peas. So that, that – and, and then we've got the sugar – uh, or, and uh, snow peas, even if it has sugar in it, if it has that snow pea, it's a flat pod, and it's really, it's an immature pea that is good for stir-frying. Uh, a lot of Asian dishes have this in it. Uh, you can let that pea get to a mature pod, but it, it loses some of its luster that way. But if you're going to save seeds, that's a way to go about doing it. Right, and so you, you have to think about what kind of pea you want, what you're going to do with it, or just be like us and kind of plant along the gamut and just enjoy what you get, right? But if you plant, you know, if you're going to plant just all three varieties, and all of them will grow the exact same way. It's not like onions where only certain type of varieties will grow in certain portions of the country. These will grow all, all no matter where you're at in the world. 
but you want to divide them up. If you're planting a row of English peas, a row of snap peas, a row of sugar snap, uh, sugar snow peas, you want to mark them so you know what the end results you know what you're looking for at the time of harvest. Because if you're waiting, if you, if you intermingle it and you have snow peas uh, intermingled with the English peas, you're going to wait until they all bulk up, and then you've got your flat pod peas that you're going to use for stir fry that are not going to be good for stir fry because they're at a mature state and they're big pod peas. Right. And then you also want to trellis your peas. This is going to help them grow up, and you don't have to do anything fancy. You can just do some twine or garden string around some posts and they will definitely twine up there and the trellising is done you can be very creative you can buy at the garden center a, a netting and allow them to crawl up that you can use a fence we, we've been very creative and if you're a innovator and decide to drive around the neighborhood on junk day uh, we found the bottom of baby cribs the that mesh wire bottom and that works very well for peas as well but again like holly stated we want to get them off the ground because peas are soft stem plants and if you don't get them elevated and they have ten, what, what do you call those tentacles tendrils tendrils that want to grasp onto something and if they don't have something to grasp onto they will fall over they'll get top heavy and uh, and fall over and the the stems will pinch and then you don't have peas you've got a dead plant on your hand right that's <clears throat> That's good to keep in mind. I was going to mention And there are thing. dwarf variety peas as well. Right. Uh, those are really good for container gardening because simply you just want to put them in a container. They'll get about 18, 24 inches tall at, at most. A normal traditional pea, we've seen them as high as three and a half, four foot tall. Uh, it, it's a very common uh, plant size for them. But the dwarf varieties, and you can find these at, at garden centers online, they, they'll get you know, 18, 24 inches high. You can drop a, a really cheap tomato cage or simply just put some twigs and stakes, um, broken limbs that you found in the yard, just something to allow them to, to shimmy up like a, a rope at the gym. You know, uh, people, you just, just something to hold on to is all we're looking at doing with the peas. What else did you want to say about the peas? I was just going to notate that it is important to make sure you're planting them at the right temperature and have nice moist soil but not overly moist soil because if that's the case, they could just rot in the ground. Right. If and you, we've had that happen. We've had that happen. You put them in the ground at, at that 40-degree temperature, and it's extremely wet, and then it kind of drops to below 40, and they set and rot. And this is common with any vegetable, any seed that you're putting around, whether it's potatoes, whether it's corn. There's an optimal soil temperature at root zone that these plants grow best at. That's why there's information on the back of the package. That's why there's a, a billion and a half different websites that say plant your peas at no colder than 40 degrees because uh, it's, it's more effective to, what, what's the saying, I'd much rather plant my, my peas, my tomatoes, whatever, fill in the blank, two weeks later than the second time with my neighbor when he plants them the first time. So you want to keep that in mind uh, when it comes to growing peas in containers, in raised, in raised beds, in traditional ground garden. The thing with the peas in the containers, you can get away with that because you're, you're going to have it on a patio porch deck, most likely, in a smaller container. And whenever it gets to you're going to put good potting soil or compost. or We grow straight in compost. There's nothing wrong. There's a lot of uh, sites that say, oh, you want to mix your compost with a certain mixture of uh, potting soil or vermiculite. We've grown in straight compost for years and have had actually n uh, no problems, and it thrives very, very successfully. But with a container or grow bag, whatever the case is, you've got your peas in, the dwarf variety. Uh, you can just carry them inside in the hallway if it's going to be really cold at night on the early days. And, and what is it? The peas... The short, as the days get longer throughout the, the summer, the peas will produce less. We usually have the optimal, we usually have the best pea production about uh, the week before the 4th of July. Somewhere in that range is about the peak. Now, if you're, the, the dwarf varieties work good in the containers, but you can also grow the regular peas in containers, grow bags, as long as you have some kind of stability. Yeah, and could you grow peas in a straw bale? We could, you could grow peas in a straw bale. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Again, if you condition the bale correctly and follow the, the requirements on the back of the seed package and do all the steps correctly, uh, peas will grow really anywhere. And, and the nice thing about peas, unlike some vegetables, you can plant these peas early in the, in the spring when the soil is 40 degrees. Again, I stress that because people will want to put them in as soon as we get the first 40 degree day or for, uh, first 70 degree day and they think, oh, well, everything's good. Once the peas get harvested in the optimal time about July, that's the time you want to replant your peas for the fall harvest. Peas take about 70 days to reach maturity. So by the time you harvest that first bunch, and, and uh, you can start and replant them again, 
to get a fall harvest, and that's a lot of the cool weather crops you plant in the spring. And we'll we'll, we'll talk about that. When yeah, we get yeah, we'll get more it. into that. But I want to make that we'll, reference. We'll let you guys know when when we plant our peas this spring, so you can kind of get an idea for us here in southeast Wisconsin. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, then click on the Listen Live button, and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well also. Go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the simple radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.